So I've gotten a few comments asking me to update this deck and I think now is the right time to do it. It's a deck that does a little bit of everything. It can go first and make some boards with some good negates. However, where it actually specializes is going second and OTKing your opponent after breaking their board. Of course, the deck that I'm talking about today is 8 Axis. And if you guys don't know what 8 Axis means, it pretty much means you have level 8 monsters that you put on the board, combine that with some level 2 tuners, and you can make some level 10 synchros, or you can make some rank 8 monsters, which is absolutely insane i don't want to take up too much of your time though so with that let's get right into the deck profile and i'll show you guys what this deck can really do all right so getting into the deck profile here we are going to start off with three deep sea diva this is the only normal summon that you guys have in your deck it's a tuner level two and it can get another deep sea diva out to your side of the field you guys are going to see why that's really important but it does two things for you one it gives you access to your level 10 synchros because a two plus any level eight which you guys will see this is a axis after all you guys are going to see that level 10 synchros are really easy to get into but on top of that having a second deep sea diva means you can make two level 10 synchros or you can actually make a zeus play with this which i'll show you guys in a little bit when we get into the extra deck but it's really important of course to be playing three deep sea diva also she baits out hand traps which is really nice because if your opponent's using hand traps on this you're, you're free to go right which is really nice then for the other level two we're playing three black wing sharanga the waning moon now this is really important to play as well you can play assault synchron i know a lot of people were trying to play that i personally like sharanga a little bit more because sharanga gives you access to a certain monster in the extra deck your black wing full armor master which is absolutely insane it's a towers for the deck it's like a boss monster for the deck and if you're playing uh the assault synchron you don't have access to the full armor master which is why i like playing the sharanga and it having to have monsters with 2000 attack or more is not an issue because you guys are going to see all our level 8 monsters here are all going to have more than 2000 attacks so we're playing three danger bigfoot three danger thunderbird i decided to max out on thunderbird i think thunderbird is really powerful and it's underrated especially in today's format people are always setting cards even if it's one or two cards thunderbird is going to be able to get rid of that, that for you so these are board breakers for you as well and then they're also draw power for you the level 8 of course with any of your level 2 is really important these can make rank eights as well so very very important bigfoot popping face up cards thunderbird popping face down cards is really really nice over here then we're playing three alpha keep in mind you want to go second in this deck right i don't know if i mentioned this earlier but you want to go second you want to be able to otk alpha is a level eight monster that you can special summon it becomes a three thousand meter for you and you can break boards with this card of course but then you also have access to shanga now with your deep sea diva you can make a level 10 synchro so it's really really powerful playing three alpha i would not recommend not playing three alpha it's it's really really powerful and you have to be maxing out on a lot of these level eight monsters because they're just the best level eight monsters in the game three gizmek as well gizmek is really good for two reasons one reason of course it being able to be an extender which is really nice it gets you a level eight body on the board but it also is really nice because once it is on the board it has that second effect that can kind of pop cards your opponent controls and it's really nice because it's another kind of card that helps you break boards now you don't really need this to break boards you have bigfoot you have thunderbird you have a lot of other cards that you guys are going to see in the main deck but it is really nice when it does come up so i do like playing three gizmek orochi and on top of that in the graveyard it can summon itself back to the field which is why i really like this at three because it's a really good trade in target right so three gizmek and then we are playing a kaiju package we're playing three gamma seal two godarla and one dogoran so that's it for the kaijus we're playing six kaijus here the reason we're playing these six is because first of all they're all level eight and that's really important because level eight of course with trade in is really important but i'm also playing these different names because we are playing slumber in the deck and you guys are going to see with slumber it's really important that you play different names so that you always have access to slumber on top of that gamma seal is the weakest one so you guys can be summoning gamma seal to your opponent's side of the field and then if you open two kaijus you can summon a gadarla or a dogaran to your side of the field you can honestly even summon a gamma seal which is really nice so technically these are board breakers but they're also extenders for you because they're also going to get themselves out to the field if you're opening multiple of these right so that's why i really like the kaiju package i would never play this deck without the kaiju package i think it's too powerful i know a lot of people have been talking about lava golem and i think that's something that i considered but lava golem in this deck doesn't really do anything for you outside of breaking your opponent's board and you guys are going to see with these monsters already plus the other cards you guys are going to see in this deck it's actually not that hard to break your opponent's board anyway so lava golem is just kind of like a better kaiju if your opponent has two monsters but a worse kaiju because you should be able to break the boards anyway so having this as an extender is really really powerful and then lastly this is the only card i guess that doesn't really synergize with anything else in the deck but we're playing three fenrir fenrir is one of those cards that's good going first and going second now of course you want to go second with this deck but you can go first right if you're opening deep sea diva plus an extender you can make a baron with a kosher fenrir and that's actually a legitimate board right so you're always going to want to go second anyway but if you are forced to go first fenrir is really good fenrir is also another board breaker for you you start your turn with no monster on your board 
board, some in Fenrir. You can battle phase, try to bait out some things, and then you can go from there if you're not OTKing. Or you can just have this on your side of the board, and then you can Kaiju your opponent, and then you can get rid of that Kaiju with that Fenrir if you really need to, right? Which is really, really powerful. So that's why I like Fenrir. And Fenrir also works with Lava Golem if you guys are choosing to play Lava Golem as well. But again, I think the Kaijus are just way better than Lava Golem in this deck, specifically for this deck. And then uh, Fenrir, of course, doesn't synergize with the eights, doesn't synergize with the twos, but it's just such a powerful card that you need to be playing three Fenrir. Moving on to the spell cards, we are playing three trade in, of course. I mentioned earlier that we're playing all the level eights. Trade in is really, really powerful with them. It's, of course, really powerful with the dangers. You trade in, you get rid of a Bigfoot, you get to draw two cards, and you get to activate Bigfoot to pop a card your opponent controls. Or same thing with Thunderbird as well. So trade in with Thunderbird, Bigfoot, Gizmek, Roshi is, is really powerful. So three trade in, of course. Then we're playing three thrusts. So I decided to go ahead and play three thrusts. Now, I know this card is a little bit pricey, guys. Don't get me wrong. I understand that this card is a little bit more uh, on the expensive side. But if you guys really want to optimize this deck as much as possible, three thrust is super important for your consistency in previous builds. And if you guys want to take a more budget option, just play desires as well. I would cut this to two and just play the two desires here. And then you can make space for a third card. But I think thrust is really good for the consistency purposes. And the fact that there are so many powerful spell cards, you guys can search with thrust. So you can search your talents. Of course, you can actually search trade in funny enough as well. But you can search talents. So we're playing two talents. We're playing one change of heart. You can search the change of heart as well. So you're always going to be able to with thrust search whatever you need. And the really cool thing about this format is that thrust is always going to be live. Every deck is going to be activating monster effects on your turn. So thrust is always going to be live. And that's why I like playing the thrust with the tactics, the change of heart. Harpy's Feather Duster as well is a card that you can search off of your thrust. I'm playing two Lightning Storm. Now you can get away with playing one because you are playing thrust, but I do like playing the two because if you do open this, you can thrust into a Talents or a trade in or something else, right? So I do like playing the two Lightning Storm. I'm not playing Dark Ruler no more. I'm not playing Evenly Mash because you do want to OTK with this deck. So you don't want to lose that battle phase. You don't want to lose the ability to OTK. The other card, if you guys wanted to cut Lightning Storm to one uh, because you can search off thrust technically, is you can play Herald of the Abyss for the purely matchup. That is an option for you as well. The only reason i wasn't playing is because we're playing the kaijus and we should in theory have a good purely matchup but if not yeah you guys can cut this play one herald of the abyss as a purely card or a card to out purely monsters but uh yeah otherwise i really like these ratios and then lastly we're playing the one interrupted kaiju slumber we're only playing one slumber because we can thrust into it which is actually really important so that's why i like playing the one slumber i want to play more than one this is one of those cards that can get ash really easily and when you're starting off with this it, it's it's not actually as good as drawing a kaiju because drawing a kaiju is guaranteed to out any Anything your opponent has drawing this isn't so that's why i like playing the kaijus i only like playing one of this because it's a searchable card moving into the extra deck here of course you are going to be playing your level 10 synchro monsters so we're playing the one baron baron of course is really important it's the best level 10 synchro in the game and the really nice thing is with the rarity collection this is actually fairly affordable now you guys can get a super rare of course i'm rocking the qcr i just wanted to show that off but very affordable card now which is nice uh full armor master as well as changing to help you otk uh changing is really nice especially with the gizmek it synergizes really well with that but these are the only level 10s that you guys are going to be playing they're the only really good ones and I, I honestly like i don't think i would be playing any other ones so these three are perfectly fine we're playing the one dingirsu dingirsu is really powerful as well just making this go second to out certain monsters is really powerful and then we're playing a drake lubion package with number 100 hope harbinger and number 92 this is another otk package for to make number 100 but if you're not otking you can actually use your glubion to summon hope harbinger and that's really powerful as well because you're setting up a negate with hope harbinger right so i do like this package over here one santa fond for the graveyard decks is really powerful one sky cavalry century yeah so remember earlier when i said deep sea diva summoning another deep sea diva is important because you can make sky cavalry century sky cavalry century is a card that you know it doesn't get destroyed by battle so you can attack with this and then you can slap a zeus on top of it of course you can slap a zeus on top of any of these but uh, slapping a zeus on top of this is really nice it's just one of those packages that becomes really really powerful then we're playing the one ip mascarina the one nightmare unicorn and i'm going to be honest with you guys nightmare unicorn is still a very powerful card in today's format but if you guys have access to sp little knight just play sp little knight here instead it it's better than unicorn honestly i just don't have access to an sp little knight but this card should in theory be sp in this case we're playing the one nightmare unicorn with change of heart and triple tactics talent it's really easy to make these kind of cards anyway but sp of course is just better than unicorn so if you guys have sp play sp one of the bls soldier of chaos of course you're playing big level monsters all level eight monsters so this is really powerful to make and then the one lingaribo because i know rescue ace is playing the ibli lock and you don't want to lose the ibli lock so like lingaribo kind of helps you with that right so that's why we're playing the one lingaribo but that's it for the extra deck the extra deck here is actually really cool because there's so many other cards that i'm not playing that you guys can play so there's the pain 
gainer and the seven sins or whatever those those spider cards you guys can play that as an otk package there's so many different cards that you guys can play in the extra deck i just think optimally these are the optimal cards that you guys want to be playing you guys can even cut number 92 if you guys wanted to to only play hope harbinger and number 100 i just like having this extra one uh just because sometimes it comes up right but again i really like this the only thing i really would change is this for sp if you guys have it lastly for the side deck we are playing 3dd crow if you guys saw we don't really have a lot of tier limits hate and tier limits is one of those popular decks right now so 3dd crow is really good three drone lockbird as well this is really good into the manadium matchups going second drone lockbird just auto wins those kind of matchups so three and three i really like these as hand traps you guys saw we're not really playing hand traps in the main deck we're only playing board breakers but sometimes against some matchups some of the board breakers aren't as good so the hand traps are just a little bit better and then when you guys are forced to go first you guys can see the deck can still make plays you can make rank eights you can make level 10 synchros but why not back them up with some broken trap cards so three skill drain you start playing big monster beat down with this which is really really nice three there can be only one really really powerful card as well if you guys saw actually in the main deck i'll show you guys real quick lastly we're playing three barrier barrier is a card that you can actually search off thrust which is really nice but when you're forced to go first against manadium and some other decks barrier is really powerful but there can only be one it's actually really good and i want to show you guys why this card is really good and it's something that people don't talk about in this deck enough that's because deep sea diva here is a sea serpent you got a wing beast a beast uh, you have another wing beast i guess here so it doesn't work with sharanga and thunderbird but that's pretty much it right because you have machine aqua insect dinosaur psychic so you guys can see all of these cards are just all different types and it's really good with there can only be one because if you're setting up like an alpha plus a Gizmec plus a Fenrir, all different types, it becomes really powerful where there can only be one because not a lot of decks can play around this while you can, which is really, really nice. That's it for the side deck. Keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. If you guys want to change it up for your locals, your locals are a bunch of combo players and you want to, you know, be able to beat combo decks. That's something that you guys should prepare for, of course. But this side deck is just kind of like a generic side deck that I think is pretty good for this deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. That is my take on 8-axis for today's format. I think this deck is really powerful. Keep in mind, it's still a rogue deck, but it can do some really powerful things, especially with the really broken staple spells that we have in today's format. And a lot of them are a lot more affordable now that Rarity Collection is out. I know Thrust is still a little bit high, but with Thrust, you guys can replace that with something like Pot of Desires, maybe play a third Tactics Talent, and that's all you really need to do, and the deck is still just as consistent. Now, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload seven days a week here on the channel five shorts a week and you guys are going to get at least two long videos a week seven days a week every single day you guys are going to have something to watch so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned to more if you guys want to see any deck profiles let me know in the comment section down as well and i will try to make it happen for you so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko signing out peace